Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. It's November 14th. Options are a little limited for trail runs these days because um, it's like also like there's like a couple week hunting season. But I'm at a really public place right now and so I don't have to worry about anything like that. But it's starting to get cold. Days are getting shorter and uh, yeah, temperatures are dropping like crazy. So when I woke up this morning, it was 23 degrees. <laughs> and right now it's like low 40s. So I'm wearing shorts and just like a, t like a long sleeve shirt with a Under Armour shirt underneath. I'm using the Coros Vertex today. Last time I used this watch was at No Business and I'm just making sure it works. Uh, so I just updated firmware and uh, one of my friends is actually gonna use it uh, for an FKT attempt. And one week from today, but he doesn't have a GPS watch. <laughs> but it's getting really cold and it's starting to rain right now, so I'm gonna get going out here on the trails. Uh, probably just a short run today. Like I'm still in this like set uh, like recovery slash transition mode, and I want to talk about that in a little bit uh, after the run. Like once I get home. Also, I have a cool idea uh, that I wanted to share with you guys. I think I'm gonna get it going uh, regarding community and maybe how we can all connect a little bit better. Yeah, I'll explain more when I get back to the house. Just a short run, probably nothing too terribly special or fast. I've been kind of waiting on everything in my body to start feeling good again, and pretty much everything is except for this little spot, like right in my ankle. Uh, like, it just feels like there's a little like tendon or ligament or something that's kind of sticking and getting uh, just a little sore. So, not pushing it yet with training. I just want to get to a place where I feel like I'm totally recovered from no business because pretty soon, like mid-December to end of December, I'm going to have to actually start training properly for the Cruel Jewel 100 that happens in May. There's some mountain there right over here, so we're going to get going now. No masks, okay. Uh, four and a quarter miles, 42 minutes. 
Feeling pretty good. Rain's starting to come down pretty good though. So I'm taking a spring hill aid. I don't think I said anything, but we're in the ultra superior 4.5s today. So I do love training hard and everything, but it's also really nice to just have a relaxing run. <laughs> I have no time or distance goal. I'm just out here hanging out. When it's cold, when it's cold, you don't want to sit too long because everything starts to lock up. It's about six and a half miles, done for the day. Feel good, feeling pretty good. Trails are starting to get really wet and slippery with all the leaves and rain. Ankle did okay, I was telling you guys earlier, it was feeling a little bit of uh, like tendon or ligament, something. I'm gonna get inside, it's starting to rain, really good. <laughs> Got the good old beach towel on the chair. It's actually not that bad running in the rain. Like, it's kind of fun. Like, once your hands warm up and you can feel them again, like, you can just get used to the cold. Being in the woods, you don't get a whole lot of rain on you. So, yeah, really good run. But, I'm gonna head home now and we'll talk more there. All right, so we're back. Uh, I wanted to talk about a couple things. Uh, first of all, the exciting thing that I wanted to kind of announce is that I've been trying to think of, like, a uh, way to kind of like increase community and everything and um, I thought about doing like a Facebook group but I actually don't like being on Facebook very much so that was always kind of like a thing I you know was like yeah there's a lot of Facebook groups out there but I don't really want to make one uh, and uh, there's a couple other like websites and everything one that I actually like being on is Discord and so I created a Discord server uh, and so the link is down below if you guys use Discord you can jump on it and we can just have like some kind of like more back and forth chats about gear, about races, about training, about anything you want. Uh, I just thought it'd be a really good place uh, for everyone to come together and I know it's probably not going to be like a thousand people signing up. There's probably going to be just a small group right away. And that's really great. The other cool thing about Discord is that there's a talk channel. And so my goal, I've seen this done in other live streams, is that like on the Tuesday night show, like people could get on there and kind of like call into the show and uh, like ask questions that way. And just, you know, like another way to interact. So I'm just trying to like think outside the box. Uh, and I think that Discord is a really cool uh website, server, whatever it's actually called. So that's just an idea I had to kind of create a little bit more community because I know that we go back and forth in like YouTube comments, but sometimes those can get kind of like overwhelming and the conversation gets lost. And so Discord is a really cool way to just keep the conversations going and get on there and ask other people's advice and everyone can chime in. Uh, and I just think it could be really fun. The other like exciting thing that's still kind of like in the middle of the process, but wanted to share with you guys is that over the past couple weeks, I've been trying to like do a little bit of rebranding and come up with a new logo. Uh, the logo that I have, I designed a couple years ago and it's just super simple, just like a script, my name and then productions underneath. Uh, and I still really like that. I wanna use that for like the filmmaking, like documentary, uh, narrative stuff like in the future, but then also like all of the audio production that I do. Uh, and wanted to have a separate logo that uh, is a little bit uh, just like different like for the YouTube channel. So over the past couple of weeks, I've actually hired several Fiverr. <laughs> uh, I know. And none of them have really turned out that great. Like there's some that are kind of like, okay. Uh, but I'm working on now kind of like taking some ideas and creating like my own. And so I've been working a lot in like Adobe Illustrator and hopefully pretty soon I'm gonna have a brand new logo that I can share with you guys. 
Um, but if any of you guys out there are like professional um, like designers or anything like that, like let me know. That would be really fun to work with you and kind of like bounce ideas back and forth. The other thing that's coming like a couple months down the road uh, with a brand refresh and new logo and everything is that once I hit 10,000 subscribers, which is crazy to say out loud, I'm going to launch some merch. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about it and I've never really wanted to like, I don't know, like do it. <laughs> Uh, but I actually do think it would be kind of cool. That's gonna be happening soon. Uh, Social Blade thinks it'll happen like sometime around the new year. So hopefully uh, within the next couple months, I'll have like a new logo, new brand, refresh all that, and then some merch that uh, if you guys are interested in buying a shirt or something, you could. It's kind of funny for me to think about, <laughs> uh, but I guess I have to remind myself that over the years, I have bought a bunch of merch from other YouTubers, so. It's coming. <laughs> and the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is kind of like what stage of training I'm in right now. Um, a lot of people have been asking on recent videos, like, hey, what are you up to? What's your next race? What's your next big goal? Like what's coming? So I've got Training Peaks open, planning out the calendar really is what I'm doing. Uh, the biggest thing I have coming up is May 14th. I have the Cruel Jewel 100. Uh, which is a crazy tough mountain race down in Georgia, 25 weeks from now. Uh, so if we go back to today, like I'm getting like kind of close to that time where I need to start uh, like actually training for it. Um, I've also got a race uh, middle of March, uh, the Owen Putnam State Forest 50K. Uh, it's supposed to be a 50 miler also, um, but uh, the 50 miler this year is canceled just because they need to make sure that they can actually pull off the race with these times that we're in. Uh, so it's a 50K, which is pretty cool. It's one of the hardest races in Indiana. Um, the terrain down there and Owen Putnam State Forest is just ridiculous. I actually have a film that I made for that race. Uh, you guys can check that out up here if you want to. So within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be 24 weeks out. And that's typically like when I like to start like prepping myself for a race. 20 weeks out is like the bare minimum. So we're looking at November 30th is 24 weeks out. That's when I really need to start my like VO2 max uh, training block. Uh, just kind of like that high intensity, short bursts of energy, like those types of efforts. Um, when you're training for hundreds, it's very different than training for a marathon or a 5K or anything like that. Uh, so you can't just like pull a book off the shelf and like a marathon training plan to train for a 100 miler. Like it's very, very different. There's not a lot of research done on what's the best way to train for a 100 miler. This is kind of like the thinking that's kind of like more prevalent nowadays is kind of like the high intensity stuff, like uh, furthest away from your race. And as you get closer to your race, you want it to be more race specific. So basically the beginning of December, that's when my training blocks are going to start for the Cruel Jewel 100. Um, I'm also looking at uh, doing the Indiana Trail 100 at the end of the year next year in October. But really the main focus over the next couple months is gonna be training for the Cruel Jewel 100. Uh, it's got 33,000 feet of elevation gain, <laughs> uh, which, you know, compared to no business, that's over twice as much. It's like almost three times. It's probably like, it's like two and a half times the gain from No Business 100. And I wouldn't really consider the No Business 100 to be like a hard course because of the climbing. Like it was harder because of the technical like footing and all that. Yeah, I've done the Grindstone and Run Rabbit Run, which were more comparable to what Cruel Jewel will be like. Uh, but even those were like 23, 24,000 feet of gain. Cruel Jewel will have another 10,000 feet. So. Uh, I definitely need to work on my climbing. Over the last four years that I've been running hundreds, uh, I really feel like I've learned a lot about the training as I've gone through them. And I feel like I'm ready for this race, which is gonna be the absolute hardest 100 miler I've ever attempted. Uh, I feel like I'm ready to be the most prepared uh, training wise and mentally and physically prepared. Um, I just feel like, I feel like this is gonna be the one and I really want to put in a really solid winter of training. Uh, so that's what we're looking at right now. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I think this is gonna be a great winter and spring of training for the Cruel Jewel 100. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Uh, if you're into like joining the community, check out the link below for the Discord invite. Uh, be happy to see a bunch of you guys sign up. Uh, I think that would just be a really fun place to get together and kind of like exchange ideas and talk and stuff. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you again soon, bye.